Football has really evolved over the years, and as far as many fans and even former players are concerned, the sport has fallen off. They say it's now robotic, lacking in flair, and just generally boring. And many have blamed it on Pep Guardiola. To be fair, the beginning of the collapse of entertaining football as we used to know it happened to coincide with the rise of Pep as a coach. So yeah, Pep Guardiola ruined football. Or did he? A lot happened in 2008 that heralded a new era of football. It was the year that the Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi rivalry at the topmost level officially started. Before 08, football was about beauty and entertainment, and you could see that in the guys who were touted as the biggest stars of the sport at the time. Ronaldinho, Kaká, Zidane, Ronaldo Nazario, Figo, Henri, you name them. These guys were the best players in the world in the 90s and early noughties, and they were all about self-expression via the ball. Back then, the Ballon d'Or was not just about who scored the most goals or put up the best numbers in the season under review, it was about a lot more than that. But Messi and Ronaldo came up and everything changed. Those two were so inseparable that determining who would win the Ballon d'Or pretty much came down to which one of the two aliens scored the most goals and won the most silverware that year. When did this all start? Yep, 2008. And when did Pep Guardiola secure his first job as coach of a senior team? In 2008. You see, these two occurrences just happen to coincide. So are we implying that Pep was just an innocent bystander in all of this? Certainly not. This man was handed the code to a 20-year-old nuclear weapon named Lionel Messi, and he went on to use it to destroy the world of football. Pep had a vision of how to utilize and properly manage Leo from the very beginning, and you could see it in how he sent Ronaldinho and Deco packing the moment he got there. He then went on to use Messi on the left, right, in midfield as a force nine, all over the place. He built his teams around Messi and it didn't matter who suffered because of it. Zlatan was one of the most famous casualties, but Pep just didn't care. As long as Messi was firing on all cylinders, he was absolutely unstoppable. But wait just a minute. How is anyone even blaming Pep for ruining the sport when his Barcelona team was very entertaining and dominant? One could argue that Pep's Barcelona played the purest form of tiki taka we have ever seen in footballing history, and that was peak entertainment. But while that's certainly true, tiki taka is a very complex system which encourages an insane level of teamwork and stifles individuality to a great extent. Of course, Messi was always given license to do whatever he wanted, but that's only because he is Messi. Tiki Taka is about always maintaining a certain shape, being in a certain position and doing a certain thing at a certain time, and then going on to repeat that pattern over and over and over and over again. In case you haven't noticed, that's exactly how robots work. And under Pep, if you go outside of any of the positions or patterns he set up, you could be in real trouble. Don't believe it? Ask Henri. It was very entertaining to see well-executed, intricate passing from front to back, but we should have known that it was the start of something, that football was definitely going to evolve. But even before the evolution, teams were forced to employ the craziest tactics just to try and stop this super team that Pep had created. We saw different teams put up ultra-defensive low blocks against Pep's Barcelona in different games. Hiddings Chelsea in 2009, Mourinho's Inter Milan in 2010, Di Matteo's Chelsea in 2012 are some examples. It seems like you only stood a chance of stopping Pep Guardiola by playing the ugliest and most defensive type of football known to mankind. Fast forward to 2024 and it's still the same story. We saw how Arteta and Ancelotti pulled up at the Etihad with the nastiest low blocks ever just to try and get a point against Pep. But Guardiola did evolve. He didn't continue playing his pure tiki-taka style, especially after he moved to England. For some time, he tried to rely heavily on his entertaining, ultra-attacking style of play. But while it often yielded results in the league, it repeatedly failed him in Europe, so he had to learn. Pep learned that the game had changed and he would have to work on his defense in order to achieve the big results he needed, so he started to invest in defenders. In 2016, his most expensive signing was John Stones, a centre-back. 2017, his most expensive signing was Emmerich Laporte, a centre-back. That year, four of his six most expensive signings were defenders. One was a keeper, Edison, and the last one was Bernardo Silva. In 2019, his most expensive signing was Rodri, a big and strong defensive midfielder. 
Three defenders, Cancelo, Angelino and Porro, and one goalkeeper, Stefan, made up the top five. In 2020, his two most expensive signings were centre-backs, Ruben Diaz and Nathan Ake. In 2022, he bought another two defenders, and in 23, his most expensive signing was the centre-back, Josko Gvardiol. So, you can see how much attention Pep began to place on his defence after moving to the Premier League. Because of this evolution of Pep, or pep evolution if you like, we have often seen Man City set up with four centre-backs. A back line of any four of Stones, Kanji, Diaz, Guardiola or Ake is not alien to anyone at all these days. For those who don't understand how far Pep has come, here's some context. In the 2009 and 2011 Champions League finals, Pep used midfield as the centre-backs, Yaya Torre in 2009 and Mascherano in 2011. Fast forward to the 2023 Champions League final, we saw him deploy four centre-backs and four midfielders. Pep's need for defensive security has surely made his game a little less expressive and less entertaining than it used to be. But at the heart of it, it is still the same philosophy. Pep still wants his players to maintain a certain shape, pass the ball at a certain time and always be in a certain position at every single moment, which is the same philosophy behind the tiki taka style. But hey, Pep's team still score a truckload of goals from inside and outside the box still dominate games and his players still put up high dribbling and chance creation numbers every time. Why then do people say Pep Guardiola ruined football? The simple answer is his clones. In the history of this sport, we've not seen one manager have as many clones as Pep currently does. Arteta, Company and Maresca are all students of Pep who currently coach top clubs in Europe and play very similar styles to him. And it's honestly getting tiring. If it was just Pep doing this, it would have been okay. But all of these guys doing the same thing? Come on. Arteta is lining up four centre-backs and Maresca is attempting to invert Rhys James. Even guys who aren't students of Pep have tried to adopt his tactics. We saw how Klopp and Southgate tried to invert Trent or straight up play him in midfield the way Pep does with Stones. This is what many would call woke nonsense. Thanks to Pep, everyone is now trying to overthink tactics and create very intricate systems, whereas football used to be so simple. Football used to be about beautiful goals, flashy skills, individuality, but now it's about complex tactics with names you've never heard before. And speaking of individuality, it's dying at a speedy rate. Look at Haaland, Salah, heck, even Cristiano himself. These guys went from being expressive players who love to run at players to being just goal machines. It's sad. But the question now is, is Pep Guardiola to blame for all of this? Or was this an evolution that was going to happen in spite of him? What do you think? Did Pep really ruin football? Share your thoughts with us in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so you never miss out on new content and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.